They say that as you get older, three things start to happen. First, you lose your memory. Um, I can't remember the other two. Uh, there are lots of jokes around about memory loss, but if you are losing your memory or if someone close to you is losing their memory, then it's no joking matter at all. It's a very distressing thing. And of course, uh, the more things we forget, the more we are worried, the more we can uh, not be certain about whether our memory is playing tricks on us or not. Wouldn't it be terrible if God is the same? Wouldn't it be terrible if God's memory is no better than yours or mine? Well, that's why this week I'm looking at Bible passages that talk about God's memory. Of course, the very idea of God ever forgetting anything uh, is uh, unthinkable. But there are several places in the Bible where we're specifically assured that God doesn't forget rather that he remembers. And one of the first, one comes, first ones uh, in the Bible comes in chapter 8 of the book of Genesis. Uh, it's in the story about Noah and his family on the ark. Uh, the flood has just happened and has wiped out everything else, all other living creatures except uh, those preserved on the ark. And we pick up the story at Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, where we read this. God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. It's a really odd way to put it, isn't it? God remembered Noah. I mean, there was nothing else for God to think of. Everything else on earth had been wiped out. How could God not remember Noah? The point is that when the Bible talks about God's memory, it's always with a purpose. It's always with a view to God acting on the basis of what he calls to his mind. So we learn here that uh, uh, as everything else had been wiped out, God called to mind those that were being preserved on the ark. And immediately he acts. He sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. That's the way that we read about God's memory in the scripture. He remembers something, meaning uh, he calls it to his mind, ready to act on it. I, I don't know whether God ever has anything that's not at the front of his mind. Uh, we can't imagine what it would be like to know everything and to have all power. So when the Bible talks about God calling something to mind, that uh, it's talking in a, a language that, that, that's meant to make us uh, have a bit of an insight, even if uh, it's bringing a sort of physical limitation that's not really there uh, in, in God himself. But we go on in the story of Noah and we read in the next chapter, uh, chapter 9 of uh, Genesis, uh, this is what happens when the, uh, the flood has uh, subsided, the ark has landed, Noah and uh, his family and all the animals have uh, got off the ark. This is what God says. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. It's bizarre, isn't it? Bizarre that God should speak in this way. But he's allowing Noah to have a, a, a kind of insight into the way God acts. God says, look, I'm going to put a, a rainbow there. He says, that's what's going to prompt me. That's what's going to jog my memory. God's memory surely doesn't need jogging. But he says, uh, think of it this way. The rainbow reminds me of the agreement I made or the covenant, uh, as he says in verse 13. My agreement that I will never again uh, uh, pun uh, uh, punish uh, the whole of uh, humanity by sending another flood to destroy everything. God says, I will promise and I will keep my promise. That's what I'll remember. See, God's memory is bound up with the whole of the rest of his character. And God's character uh, is total trustworthiness. God makes certain promises and his memory means that he will never, ever forget or forsake those promises. We can be completely sure of God 
Because unlike human beings who are so unreliable for all sorts of different reasons, God is totally trustworthy from start to finish. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much that you rescued Noah and his family and all the animals uh, through the flood waters. And we thank you for that sign of the promise that you made to Noah on that day, the sign of the rainbow and your promise that uh, you would always remember and keep your promises. We thank you that we can depend on you, knowing that you're tr truly and totally trustworthy. Amen. Amen. Every blessing. Have a great day. Thank you.